If you're ready to take the child out of the infant carrier, it's important to note we still recommend keeping them rear facing as long as possible. The next car seat would be a convertible car seat, which is one that goes backwards and forwards. So you wanna find the label on the car seat and look for the rear facing weight and height limit that's on the label. If your child still fits between this height and weight range, it's recommended that we keep them backwards. The seat will be bigger and there are some differences that you'll need to note. On a convertible car seat, you'll have multiple harness options because it is made to accommodate a taller child and you may have multiple slots down here for the buckle. Make sure you're reading your owner's manual to know which slot to use that's appropriate for the child's size. And remember when the child is backwards, we wanna make sure we're using a harness slot that is still at or below their shoulder level. So for a rear facing child, it's going to be very similar that we see in the infant seat. We're picking the harness slot that's at or below their shoulder level. We've pulled the harness snug so there's no slack at the shoulder and we've positioned the chest clip to be level with the child's armpits. When we're ready to install the seat, first thing you wanna to, to make sure, read your owner's manual to find out how the rear facing seat is going to recline. This one has a pull down prop leg that has to come down when using the seat rear facing. Place that on the seat. The next thing you're going to identify are your belt paths. For a convertible car seat, you have two different belt paths. You have a belt path for forward facing and a belt path for rear facing. Make sure you're using the belt path for rear facing use when installing the car seat for rear facing. Once the seat belt's buckled, we're gonna pull the shoulder belt out to engage the locking retractor. We're gonna give reasonable pressure on the seat to pull the slack out of the shoulder belt, feeding that slack up into the retractor. And then we're gonna test at the belt path to make sure there's no side to side motion or away from the vehicle seat. Because this is a larger seat, you will have movement back here and this is normal. We want the movement to be restricted at the belt path. This is where you should have no more than one inch of side to side and away from the vehicle seat.